You already heard it. My island home, Bali, in Indonesia, the island of gods, also sometimes carries another name. Bali, the island of garbage. Growing up on the island of Bali, it was hard not to see the problem of plastic pollution grow up with you. Whether that's taking your first steps on a deserted beach with little flakes of plastic under your bare feet, or when you learn to plant rice for the very first time and you realize it's on top of plastic. Or how about this one? You go on a first date, a really nice restaurant, a really cute boy, but you order your first drink and bam, a plastic straw. I could go on and on and tell you the many different ways that plastic comes into our everyday life. Think about your day today, or when was the last time you went to the grocery store? How much plastic do you use? Now to quote a recent publication by the University of Newcastle in Australia, we ingest a credit card worth of plastic every single week. That is five grams of microplastic that we're ingesting every single week. So to bring it back home to Bali in Indonesia, where we are the second largest source of marine plastic pollution, it was everywhere. It's so in your face, there is no escaping it. So at the ages of 10 and 12, my sister and I, Isabel, said enough. We realized that at a young age, we didn't want to wait until we were older to start getting involved, to start taking action. Because why not? So without a business plan, without a strategy, we started an NGO called Bye Bye Plastic Bags. And it's as simple as that. Today, Bye Bye Plastic Bags is in 50 locations all around the world in 29 countries. We have become one of the largest youth-led NGOs in the country of Indonesia. And after six years of hard work and massive collaboration, as of last year, Bali officially implemented the ban on plastic bags, straws, and styrofoam. As you can imagine, it took a lot of time, energy, persistence, and commitment. Together with my team, we've spoken to over 65,000 students all around the world. We've been on 375 stages, and every year, we attend 150 events just to raise awareness, prove our point that young kids have a message and we want to be heard. But the fact is, it should not have taken us six years to ban one single-use item, especially when we know that our government of Indonesia in 2017 at the United Nations Conference, Ocean Conference made a goal to reduce 70% of our waste by 2025. That is less than five years from now. Less than it took to ban one single-use item. So, we know that it's only just beginning. The work is only starting right now. And like all regulations, it's just words on paper if it's not implemented to changing everyday habits. So, the word all hands on deck finally made sense to me. I knew we had to have the public, the private, companies, scientists, young people. This was a movement that needed everyone. But still, the procedures and protocol are as usual far too slow. Even at the recent um, COP25 in Madrid, the excuses that we would hear sometimes at these high-level conferences. We need more time. We need more plans, more research. Oh, we'll go over it in the next meeting. All of this ignores the fact that we already know what we need to know, and we know what we need to do. We have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to act according to the Paris Agreement without any loopholes for government. And for the private sector, Dig deep into your pockets, into your budgets, so that you can wake up knowing that you did more than the standard operational procedures. But we were not always taught to think like that. For boomers and Generation X, success is valued with more, 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 and pretty much only measured through materialistic possessions. Think about the linear growth of the industries, capitalism, globalization, and maybe in a different time, in a different world, success did look like that. But for my generation, and the generation that I'm a part of, we stand for 
more is less. We can no longer continue to exhaust and attack the resources of our planet home. We're at a, the most important tipping point in human history and we do not have the luxury of time. As young changemakers, we really embody this. We see this in our everyday work where we work with all levels of society to change behaviors and mindset. It's an everyday battle to challenge the comfort of the status quo. Now, I'm 19 years old, and if you didn't notice already, I'm very passionate about talking about the environment and speaking up for it. But I couldn't help that something bigger was missing. You see, I've shared the story of Bye Bye Plastic Bags many times, on many different stages, and in various ways I can tell you this story. The story of the last six years, the story of the two sisters becoming a movement, Bali's fight against plastic. But there is more. So much more that I want to share with you today. I'm part of a generation that is leading with solutions, whether that is kayaking down the world's most polluted river, banning the tampon tax, or banning plastic bags, gathering out on the streets, demanding action. But you may have heard of some of us in our generation, some of the big names, like Greta Thunberg, like Malala, like Shitaskat Martinez, or like Boyan Slat. But again, there are so many more of us. Sometimes I feel like we romanticize the idea of what it's like to be a young change maker. The narrative around us being young seems to have taken out all the heavy responsibility that we feel we carry on our shoulders and it limits us to the narrative of being so inspirational. But I have had the privilege of being surrounded by a community that didn't only see me as inspirational, but also carried my contributions seriously. I had the privilege of being a student at the Green School in Bali. But even then, after graduating a year early from high school, with everything going on, at 17 years old, at 18 years old, I was burnt out. There was so much going on, so fast, so quickly, without enough real impact happening. You know, it kind of felt like a chicken and egg story. Everybody pointing fingers at each other, blaming one another, and not getting anywhere. So, I was frustrated and just done waiting. So I jumped at the opportunity to film a movie called Bigger Than Us, highlighting the work of other young change makers around the world. And this was something that I really needed. I wanted to learn from others my age why and how they woke up every single morning ready for another day of changing the world business. I traveled all corners of the world from Lebanon to Malawi, Colorado, Brazil, Lesbos in Greece, and back home in Indonesia. With Rene Silva, he taught me the power of people's voices and the story that we can tell when we are empowered. In the favelas, I heard my first gunshots and understood the seriousness of state violence. With Mohamed Aljunde in Lebanon, and with Mary Finn in Lesbos, Greece, I understood two totally different perspectives of the refugee crisis. In Malawi, with memory, she taught me the power when women stand up for each other and for girls' access to education. Winnie in Uganda taught me what women can achieve when they're taught farming skills. And Shiteskat, he taught me celebration and connection through indigenous wisdom. And then I went back home to Indonesia, and I, I learned so many things about what's happening. The devastation of the floods, 60,000 people just before coming to this conference have been displaced because of the major floods taking over the capital city. How many more? Who is next? All of these questions, well, I can definitely tell you I went out of my comfort zone. My plastic bubble all of a sudden burst. There was so much more out there. And with the knowledge that everything is connected, from countries to problems, it's not just the environment, it's not just social, we're all connected. People are all connected. And I definitely knew that I was not alone. 
and definitely not alone when it came to, think, to the idea that we had to change the way we do everything from the way we work, the way we learn, the way we eat, the way we socialize. We needed a mass revolution. Now, something that I've learned over the last six years, or what I've experienced, no matter where or which classroom I was ever in, I was always asked the same question. Kids would always ask me, how can we do what you do? At 12 years old, this was not an easy answer, uh, to, uh, question to answer. Didn't get any easier at 13 or 14. But sooner, the more I immerse myself in all sorts of classrooms, in the school education system, I just learned plain and simply, the education system is outdated. It is not keeping up with the changes in the real world. It is not preparing us for the real issues, urgent issues that are happening in our world. So how can we ever play an important or active role in shaping the world that we live in. We're taught to go in such a linear way and traditional path, we want change. So we know we are onto something, right? The experience with Bigger Than Us, meeting all of these young change makers who are on the front line, and then the six years worth of bioplastic bags, my own experience being a green school student, I knew we were onto something. So, I would like to introduce to you our new project, Youthtopia. All of this was the confirmation that a space for young change makers to really come together but also learn from each other through a true and honest peer-to-peer -peer program was very much needed. We are hungry to understand how we can get out there on the front lines. How, what is next after we join a protest gathering out on the streets? How do we impact real change in our own communities? And Utopia aims to do that through a peer-to-peer -peer education program, where we're currently crafting these lessons with all frontline change makers and offering it to those young people who are hungry to get that knowledge. It's offering something that the education system currently doesn't offer. I believe that everyone can be a change maker, but where do we start? And Utopia is that, that missing answer. You are all here because you care about improving the state of the world. But you're also in here as a mom or a dad, or you probably have some kid that you care about. And so the question really is, what world do you want them growing up in? What are you doing to ensure that that world is livable, sustainable? Are you doing enough? Are you listening to their voices? Bye Bye Plastic Bags is the living example that kids can do things. Utopia is about how we can raise an entire generation of frontline young change makers. It's you're never too young to make a difference and it's not too late to take action. Thank you.